It's David. It's Phil. And tonight, Two Guys, One Garage is going deep into the mysteries of space and abduction. Tonight, we're going to talk to you, all lovely people, about the greys. Ooh, yeah. Get ready. They're coming. Good evening. Hi. We once again have coffee. <sighs> Fringingly choked on mine there. <laughs> Be careful, Phil. Oh, God. Okay. So the greys. Those motherfuckers. Those motherfuckers. Those aliens with those big eyes. <laughs> We're going to figure all those bitches out. <laughs> Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you know about the greys. I know that they're skinny bitches... They got big ass heads on them, big ass eyes, no dick, no vagina, <laughs> no emotion, no emotion. Yeah, maybe that stems from having no dick. Maybe it does. Ah. Maybe it does. Not controlled by the power of the balls. Yeah. Do you believe in alien grace? I'm just cutting right to the chase. Uh, no. 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 Ah, that's interesting. Believe in aliens, but not the grays. But not, not specifically the grays. No. The grays were referring to. It's kind of like the most common conception and idea of extraterrestrial life in terms of when you see accounts of people that have been abducted in the past. It's generally these so-called greys with the big the big black oval eyes, skinny bodies, and the grey skin tone, which is obviously where they get the name the greys from. There's three different types. There's a short, I mean, they're not really, I say different types, then it's just sizes. Yeah. There's tall ones. There's the average ones, the common greys, and the short greys. So what would, Apparently. The, what, what would be the difference in height? <coughs> I believe the tall greys are six to nine foot tall. So The, the common greys are, yep, the common greys are about five foot tall, and the short ones are about three foot tall. I have, I have heard stories about the short ones. Huh. Earlier on you were talking about how there's the idea and possibility that some of the greys are man, wait, not man-made, but that, yeah. like a, a biological robot, yeah. so to speak. Well, these short greys I've heard in the past, they're the ones that are apparently more so these these creations. They're just made from parts, essentially. Biological, biological parts. But no, you've probably seen movies with these grey aliens in before. Movies like Dark Skies, Night Skies, The Fourth Kind, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Did you see that? I haven't seen that. No. I haven't seen that. No. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. TV series, I think it was produced by Spielberg, Taken, The X-Files, Fire in the Sky, oh you've seen Fire in the Sky? Oh fuck no man. That's that's a good one like, that's, that's, I, it's I, quite uncomfortable the abduction scene in that when he's yeah. getting, yeah it's, it's freaky. And one of my favourite films of all time, Signs. Yeah, the terrifying signs. Terrifying Which signs, again, it's Mel important, Gibson. Important to point out that it's only a freaking 12, yet it's probably one of the scariest films out there. I mean, I've got to admit that I totally like, agree with that. He said, yeah, oh, yeah, that's like, the scariest film I've ever seen. He said that. I was like, yeah, it's shit, I'd, I'd be incli- scary. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree. I love that film. Mm-hmm. I just love it. Always have. And like we were saying to you earlier on, been to see it three times in the cinema. Got yeah. the DVD the day it came out. And the, the fucking movie. t-shirt, too. The fucking t-shirt. <laughs> I fucked Mel Gibson. <laughs> I fucked Mel Gibson. <laughs> Actually, no, Mel Gibson fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, uh, that audio recording of him on the phone. There's like work. seven of them, isn't there? Yeah, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. With your fake tits. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, calm down, sugar. Yeah, it's crazy. Jesus. He's a very angry man, is Mel. Yeah, Don't yeah. Be on the wrong side of Mel he's Gibson. A, he's obviously a fucking alien. He's a fucking alien. Wait, I'm surprised, you know, because a lot of these Hollywood types are into the Scientology. Yeah. He's not one of them. Ah. He's just he's just fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, that, that's legit, that then. So you don't believe in the greys, then? No. I, well, I don't... I haven't experienced anything... To, like, to, to allow me to believe in them mm. you know uh, if I'd had an experience where you know I'm face to face with one of these motherfuckers mm. or if there was actually like really good quality footage which there isn't of yeah which there isn't but if there was then then I'd be more inclined to think oh yeah that's, there's a chance but it's all just like he saying it's all yeah. just speculation and for me that that's not enough evidence to actually formulate a belief about them 
So, at the minute, as usual, I'm on the fence. He's on the fence, but, ladies and but gentlemen. more inclined to being on the other side of the fence. Just the, the, the other side of scepticism. Yeah. I love the idea of them. Oh, yeah, definitely. As an image, mm-hmm. I think it's it's fantastic. But it's that image that sells. And it's that image that puts that image into people's heads. Yeah. They're very, they're very humanoid. And they're very easy to sort of associate with. But do I really think that if something was visiting the planet, that's what they'd look like? Exactly, like... It seems to me a little bit too convenient that they are so human-like in their shape, you know? And even the size, like mm. you mentioned, three to nine feet has been like the like the, the, yeah. the deviation between the, the heights there. And that's not too far away from what we are, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, and, you know, and the eyes to be placed on, on the head in, in the exact same yeah. places where ours are, the, the same limbs, obviously just like elongated limbs, but like they, they effectively are humans without dicks. Essentially, yeah. And, and I think... Yeah. Mm. Is, that, is that a little convenient there? Mm. <laughs> that they happen to be very, very similar to us. But this idea that they're essentially, have you heard this theory that they're essentially a slave species to the reptilians? Obviously, ah. you, know, you know about the reptilians yeah. as an entity um, through the theories you've heard on David Icke. I don't know if you've heard things about them outside of David Icke of it. But the reptilians? No, no. It's no, not no. just David Icke that thinks about the reptilians. He didn't make up the, the reptilians Oh, no, theory. no. Oh, no, it's, like a, it's a really popular... But apparently the they're like they work essentially for the the labourers for the reptilians. Fuck. And then obviously they, these short greys are like their biological sort of technology devised by the greys. So the robot robot aliens that we were exactly. talking about before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes me question though why why you would have these, these these little guys that look like this, but then you've got the reptilians that sort of sink in and look like us. Why why didn't they just craft these little greys to look like us as well, if they can do that, you know? I, That's I an idea. That's an idea. I can't understand why they would want to... Because uh, it seems like if these reptilians do exist, mm-hmm. and they're trying to make it appear that, that they don't by blending in and effectively being and looking like us, yeah. then why would they create this... Uh, this technology that definitely doesn't look like us. Like, yeah, it resembles us, but it, it, it's, you know, blatantly alien. <laughs> yeah. You know? And why do they only go for hillbillies? Yeah. <laughs> little, little that hand, goddamn sauce that came out the <laughs> fucking sky. He played with my butthole and there. Uh... Oh, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to throw a spanner in the works, though. Slightly off topic. Wait, kind of on topic. Roswell. Ooh. 1947. And all the con- controversy that's around with that in terms of it was classed as a, f- a flying disc that went down and then the next day they changed mm-hmm. the story and they said it was it was a weather balloon. Mm-hmm. So is this where they claim that there was actually aliens on board as they well? They claimed that there was bodies in the wreckage. Yeah. Know? yeah. And that they've experimented on them. And that they've experimented and they've got the technology and it's all kept secret in Hush Hush in Area yeah. 51. And it's so all the idea is that they've like reverse engineered the, the spacecraft and... They've that, essentially gained te- the you know te- technological advancements from it, uh-huh. but there was a lot of technological, you know, superior tech that came out of the fifties. There was so many advancements in technology in the fifties. Yeah, like and uh, fif- the, like the fifties plus. Yeah, like the so it's, the, the Blackbird, the SR seventy one Blackbird. Is that the stealth? No, it's the uh, it's the fastest like plane that we've ever created. Like bar a fucking space rocket no, I didn't know about that but it's a lush looking I think that's from the 70s I think that aircraft's from the 70s but it's so what's that called? the SR-71 Blackbird oh, it's, a, it's a lush plane Blackbird? yeah just googling this motherfucker right now oh yeah, yeah it's yeah, lush yeah. isn't it? it is it's like something off Star Wars yeah isn't it? Yeah, that came out of fi- Area craft. 51 oh no <laughs> I'm just like when you said that the, what technology you know Rocketed, <laughs> pardon yeah. the pun. Well, that was all, that the, an all the crazy advancements and the atom bomb, and it, it all sort of technology just seemed to get a massive boost. Ah, in but, the the atom, but the atom bomb was would have been prior to that because that was, was it? that was exploded over Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and uh, when would it have been 1945? Mm. Was it the, was it 45? Okay, at the end of the Second World War. Was it right? Hmm, that was just me talking shit then. You stupid fuck. You stupid motherfucker. Jesus Christ. We're trying to educate these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> and failing. <laughs> so 
So, what about all these abductions? Well, isn't there like a particular state during sleep where this is like, is it the REM state? It might not actually be the REM state. Is it not like, like what is it? Is it hypnagogic or hypnopompic? Ah, that, that, that's the one. Yeah, the, one of them's waking and one of them's, one of them's yeah. when, you, when you fall asleep and one of them's when you're waking up. Yeah, the hypno, hypnagogic, if that's how you pronounce it, that, that's the one where you, you just begin to fall asleep and that's when you get these crazy like sounds and like yeah. visions and stuff. But you see, you can, you're, sort of, you're sort of still uh, like a little bit lucid as well. Like yeah. you, you know you're falling asleep. I love that state, to be honest. I actually love like that, that, that uh, time when you're just drifting off and you're like, fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm diving in here. I'm, uh-huh. I'm about to be asleep. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like, can't that like create like a certain uh, like th- these types of feelings, like like leaving your body type of thing? But what about when there's more than one person, and they they claim what? to lose time? Yeah, it's like <laughs> Betty and Barney Hill. They're the first kind of abduction case. I don't know, I don't know if you know about them. No, they were driving along a road in America, and they ah oh, they yes, seen they seen about. a ship. Yeah, and they could see the people on board, and they got taken on board. And she apparently got shown a star map from this Zeta Reticulon or Reticuli constellation. Yeah. Which wasn't validated until years later. So was that a lucky guess? So what? That so she, she got this this star map and predicted it correctly. I presume that it wasn't like a physical map that she was given. And no, she redrew back. what she was given. I believe. Whoa. So, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's absolutely amazing. Remind, both? Reminds us of a. Uh, that film K Pax, you ever seen that? That's actually a fantastic. Oh yeah, with film. Kevin Spacey. Yeah, and, and he years uh, ago. He knows all like the different like star systems and stuff. Stuff where they're like, there's only like three people in the world that know about this. Mm-hmm. Like, how could he possibly know about this? You know, that's that's what that <laughs> reminds me of. But yeah, that that's pretty like fascinating, especially if they're not friggin' NASA employees, which I presume they weren't. <laughs> no, these were just two two people driving along. Um, but yeah, there's, they, they got put into hypnosis, mm-hmm. and I think the everything, everything that they said passed. So I think like they backed up each other's the, stories. Definitely. The claims are validated. Yeah, yeah. Like here we go. A, we've got a quote from Barney. Barney here. Barney was black. Oh yeah. So he wouldn't lie, would he? Surely not. Those guys never lie. <laughs> he said. Just look at Barack Obama. Never lied in his life. <laughs> <laughs> he said under hypnosis, Barney said things like. Oh, those eyes. They're, they're in my brain. Could it be those almond, oval, black, <laughs> big eyes of the greys? Boy, get those damn eyes out of my brain. <laughs> get those damn eyes out of here. <laughs> All I see are those eyes. I'm not even afraid that they're not connected to a body. They're just there. They're just up close to me, pressing against my eyes. So presumably this is him lying there, then them like... Um like what would the word be like experiment with them yeah well apparently they took some of his sperm mm. which L- I'm sure he enjoyed, which I'm sure he enjoyed <laughs> so that's pretty amazing I mean I need to look into the story a bit more because we'll do a one more spe- uh, another show more specifically on abduction this one's more about the entities themselves the greys do you think it's possible that if there was alien life out there they'd look as similar to us in terms of that, that makeup and that body type, and that that gets back to what we were talking about the other day. Like, does life evolve in a similar yeah. pattern to how it evolves on Earth in terms is, of like the sizes and shapes of life? And things is like it that. uniform to a degree? Yeah, yeah. It would depend on like just tons of factors, wouldn't it? Like the atmosphere, mm-hmm. the size of the planet. So in terms of it's like gravity. Um, so it's and because we've never like discovered any other life forms as yet all we can like conceive of is life forms that resemble us mm-hmm. so yeah. we're just like yeah it, it, who the fuck knows maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it's the wood <laughs> so maybe it's the idea that they look like us isn't actually like so ridiculous maybe that's just like yeah well that makes sense that <laughs> what would something like a grey have to benefit from abducting somebody a human being taking sperm, taking skin. What sort of benefits do you think that would have for their race? If and why do you think they would do that? Come here, do that, but like not make it obvious. Well, the only theory that I've heard that I thought, yeah, that I like the sound of that. Um, 
totally don't buy into it, like, but is the idea that they don't have souls. For, for one, re- uh, one reason or another, these, these particular life forms don't have souls, and they recognise that yeah. human beings do have souls, and by abducting us and extracting our DNA, they can tamper with the DNA and somehow create like a synthetic soul for themselves to then mm. go on and exist in like the spiritual dimensions. Yeah, it's like they've got zero empathy. They're uh, that's like a dead inside. Yeah. From I went as a counselor, people that claim claim to have been abducted, they say that there's just it's it there's just not no soul to these these creatures. You're not looking at anything. It's like looking, yeah, they're, they're just looking mechanical. At a robot and, exactly. Yeah, mechanical. Yeah. Which goes back to what we're saying before about the how they could be like just robotic work as for yeah. a species it's, elsewhere in the universe there's, it's, there's nothing there Yeah, you're, you're looking back and you're not getting a personality or anything back yeah, at you. yeah just, they're just programmed to go in extract us mm-hmm. do the experimentation take what they need and then, and then report back to yeah. the friggin headquarters <laughs> yeah which could be the reptilians but it's a far out theory to think that this is happening really when you think yeah. about it I mean but if, if the reptilians have got anything to do with it then why would the need? They're already, you know, in theory here on the planet. Surely they could just create. This a is little, all theory and conjecture, <laughs> folks. But surely they could just create a little bunker somewhere and just go. Right, what do we need the fucking the space guys, the space robots? Yeah. I'll just go and fucking abduct somebody, kidnap somebody, yeah. drag them to the bunker, do my experimentation there, Nazi style. Mm-hmm. And all right, now we've got it. Now we don't have to freak them out with the. With yeah. the aliens and, and all this shit. We can just do it covertly. And yeah, why why was the majority of the sightings in the 50s and yeah. the 40s and 50s? But they were doing trials then, weren't they? In America with new types of equipment and s- stealth planes and things like that. Yeah. So maybe it's just people saying things that aren't really there. There's obviously loads of hoaxes. Yeah. There'll be countless hoaxes. And what about that particular time as well, being big... In terms of experimentation, humans experimenting with psychedelic drugs, man. They're seeing things in the sky. I mean, all I did was ate a big bag of mushrooms, and the next thing I know, I was getting fingered by this fucking alien. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I didn't ask for that. Did it anyway. <laughs> Selfish fuck. <laughs> so anyway, in terms of what we're seeing about Roswell, and I said there was bodies on. Mm-hmm. I've got some notes here. It says, researchers will recall that the disc that crashed in 1947 at Roswell, New Mexico, had several reptilian species on board, as well as the body parts and clothing of several Army Air Force officers. Now, there's, there's talk about these greys, or these, even these reptilians I've heard, making agreements with the US government. What do you think about that? Can you imagine the US government trading, to a degree, with extraterrestrials? Is that too far out? I think it's possible. For me, I just uh, that's just nah, not at the minute. I can't, I can't buy into that. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff on the internet actually surrounding that. Oh yeah. Um, but for me, I can't quite get my head around that. And what specifically are they saying? Like, are the deals that are being brokered here? That's the thing. I like, mean, you give us uh, access to your fucking gold, and. Will do what? <laughs> what yeah. are the aliens doing for for these these people that they're actually brokering the deals with? Getting rid of hillbillies, I think. <laughs> you get rid of the hillbillies, we'll give you what you want. <laughs> but no, a lot of people are claiming that the U.S. military does and has worked with extraterrestrial life. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's f- a stupidly far out theory, or if it's possible because. You really don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And oh, we don't know what yeah. goes on beyond the planet. Oh, there's blatantly a load of secret shit out there that we're just blatantly unaware of. <laughs> I think so. But I, th- I think that, for me, is like... Nah, that, 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 you couldn't keep that secret. <laughs> like, no. Surely that would come out somewhere down the line. Unless all the leaders were actually reptilians themselves and were truly part of the conspiracy. Yeah. And we were... It was, it was like everything was set in motion. Mm-hmm. Everybody in power... Yeah, it's to a degree an alien. Yeah, that's that's the only way where I could buy into that. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it, if these leaders, which I imagine they are, are actually humans, then I mean, imagine how fucking freaked out you'd be if you like, you know, you'd you'd been working hard in your political career and you've reached the top there, and the next thing you know, it's like, all right, yeah, uh, Mr. President, we're we're gonna have to get you a, a secret a secret base here and let you know a few things. 
first of all, we've got a trade agreement with the Greys. <laughs> you know, like, oh, fuck me, I'm gonna go insane immediately then. <laughs> yep. those, those aliens, fuck! <laughs> that would drive people Like, insane, surely that would it? just freak you out. Especially if you, like, met one. Hello. Have you heard, glad to meet you. Have you heard... Do you know who Art Bell is? No. He did, like, a, a radio show about the paranormal. Oh, yeah. And he had this call in from somebody who claimed to have worked at Area 51. Huh. And I'll play it for you, and I want your opinion on it. Very excited by this. Check. So this, this, so this dude worked for who, what, the Air Force? Area 51. Um, and what, exa what exactly are they? Is that an Air Force bit? Or is it just like a research centre or something? I think it's an Air Force base, and a, it's a military base, and I think it's a research... So it's like a secret center. secret. Military. It's sort of a secret base, apparently it, yeah. it's underground and that. And all you see above is hangars, but... This is the Art Bell caller, who claims to be on the run from Area 51. There you go. Loses transmission at the end there, what do you think? Well that was absolutely fascinating. However, I don't uh, I don't buy that. You don't buy it? I don't buy that for one second. Uh, I I don't I don't understand how that guy like that that sounded like he just that very second escaped from Area 51. Oh, first thing I'm gonna have to do is uh, is call fucking Art Bell on the radio show, you know? Instead of fucking hiding. Um mm. uh, uh, <laughs> Surely he would have found a safe haven and, and, and would sound a little less frantic when he, if you know, when he then made a call. I'd, for me, that was nah. No, you don't like it. You don't. You don't think. <laughs> I, it's... I loved what he was saying. Absolutely. Like I, I, I get such a fucking hard on <laughs> for, for ideas like that. I, that is like brain porn, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but for me, I just I'm very skeptical as to. Well, that same know, caller rang. That, that, that same caller rang back the following week. And said that it was fake what he said in that. But a lot of people think that the person who rang back and... Oh, they had, they had like a gun to his head. No, no, thing. they think that it wasn't him. It was just somebody pretending to be him. Oh, that's weird how that just literally sent shivers down my body. And that, that other bloke got killed off. And they're thinking that somebody in the know, for example, FBI, CIA, whatever, has rang up the show, pretended to be him, and claimed it was a fake to dismiss it. Yeah. Well, this other bloke's been bumped off. Yeah. You like, never know. Sort of like Men in Black 
type yeah, thing where, where the alien climbs into the skin and like takes on yeah, yeah. the body of the other guy. Like that, I like that idea. That's the idea of the alien taking on this guy's form, like killing him and then taking on his form and being able to actually speak in his yeah, voice. Yeah. Like, it, does the voice sound exactly the same in the second call as it does in the first? I wouldn't say so. No. No. I mean, I'll put it on for <laughs> if you want. Yeah. Just so you can, you can see what it sounds like when he calls back. Uh, here we go. Hope it picks up on the mic okay. Right, this is the man ringing back. By the operator saying, your party has not connected. Oh, uh, well, well, see, as you can now tell, I don't screen calls. So, right. what happened, obviously, That's was odd. that I answered the phone just at the very instant that you had been ringing as long as they were going to let you ring. Yeah. And so that occurs, obviously, sometimes I go to a line and... It uh, did, nobody's there, and that's what's happened. You know, we just were right. uh, on the cusp there. Anyway, I'm glad well, you made it back through. Yeah, you got all my paranoia buttons uh, running. Yeah. I always get very nervous when, when I call you. Uh, I'm Brian. I hung up on you last week. Oh, I see. And uh, I just figure, damn the torpedoes. Uh, I'll just do this and let the chips fall where they will. All right. Um, everybody, I am the Area 51 caller. Um... That's, that's my statement, and let you or whatever tear it apart. <laughs> you, you claim you're the Area 51? I, I am the man. How do you account for the fact, Area 51 caller, okay, that part of the way through your spiel, the satellite went down? I have no idea, and it scared the heebie-jeebies out of me that night. <laughs> Uh, I've called a number of times on your specialty line nights doing different um, kind of wacky characters and that's all that one was supposed to be. And uh, if the call had been completed, it would have been ancient history by now. How has it, has it occurred to you as uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard suggested tonight that perhaps if you're really what you say you are, you created the reality of the rest of the situation and took down my Sally? That scares the heebie-jeebies out of me because it means that what I was saying was somehow correct and it was fabrication kind of creating creating a reality. Yeah, if, if that was the case, I humbly apologize to you because I love your show and the last thing I would ever want to do is knock me off the air. So what, what, what can I do to prove my claim here? Well... I guess you could, you could, uh, you could give us a little of what you gave us then so that we could hear it and know it to be you. Are you sure you want me to do that, Art? I'm positive. Um, no, no, Art, Art, please. I, I don't want you to ask me to do this. Um, <laughs> if I start doing that, that, that guy, I, I, you're right about that now. That, no, let's just take that little sample that you just gave us, so that we don't. Do what do you think? Yep, I'm glad. You, uh, I'm glad that exists actually, because uh, that backs up what I thought initially of bullshit. You think it's just him? Yeah, I think he's a freaking weirdo. And once I heard him like do that voice again, there, I just wanted to smash his face in. What a weird guy! What a freaking maniac! Obviously, wanting attention in the fucking yeah. case, you know. He needs to go to fucking drama school. Or something, Espe- like. Especially considering he's done multiple calls. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> with different voices, different wacky characters. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very strange. It's things like that that discredit the whole alien grey sort of idea. Oh, I think the it, fakes and the hoaxes and. I know that's just so much of it about, um, and when you hear that, like most people, unfortunately, that discuss these topics are generally a bit wacky. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I love wacky people, <laughs> but, they're, but they're a bit like. Hmm, can I can I really take seriously what this guy's saying? Yeah. Uh, and that guy there for me was like, yeah, you've just fucking told me exactly what I need to know now. <laughs> you see, the more the more I talk about the idea of these alien greys and the idea of abduction, the more I begin to doubt it's going on or it has gone on because it's kind of it, it's more reflective on the people that are doing it. Really, they're generally not mm-hmm. people who are high up in society. They're not people who are should we say normal yeah generally there are some strange some strange cases the Travis Walton one when he disappeared for five days and he's 
him and his workmates, they've all done lie detector tests and passed. And but it could be the military. You never know. I mean, yeah. they could abduct you. And what if they've got suits on? And exactly. And the drug here, you could be seeing things. I mean, I mean, just one of the, just like the general things that makes me question the whole like alien contact with Earth is that idea of them traveling here in like a physical craft, mm. like. Because the, because the distances are so far between stars. Like, the closest star to us is, like, four light years away. So that's, like, four years travelling at the speed of light. Mm-hmm. The, what we have at the minute, like, travels at a fraction of the speed of light. So, and according to Einstein, if you accelerate to the speed of light, your mass becomes infinite. So what what implications does that have in a, in a physical craft? It, it, well, it suggests that that's almost impossible to even achieve in the first place mm-hmm. so how would they jump from unless they're somehow creating wormholes which is fuck knows how we would achieve that but how would you like be able to actually travel such large distances I'm assuming they live like finite lives like we do well that's that's the other thought on it isn't it it's this extra dimensional sort of gateways and wormholes and mm-hmm. that's that's how some people believe that they'll get to and from places yeah and it's wormholes and Teleportation, teleportation, this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. Teleportation, because I mean, well, just in general, the idea of maybe traveling through space in such a way that's unconventional that we know so far. Probably, because yeah. we're still very much like, cavemen at the end of the day. We've just exactly, our yeah. technology is nowhere near as as is as, ad, is as advanced as it could be. Oh yeah, I imagine there's like thousands and thousands of years left in we're now oh, in terms yeah. of like technological advancement and stuff. And that would be amazing to find out what we actually are capable of, mm-hmm. or what is capable, like in this physical universe. Because um, there must be like a limit. What is the physical though? What the universe? Well, what we're in, because I mean, atoms aren't physical, are they? Oh, is this the idea that the idea physical is the illusion? Yes. And that there isn't really such a thing as physical. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, there's that, but I guess, I guess it's like a like a language thing, that isn't it? like mm. like what do you really mean by physical? I suppose. Yeah, I, I guess it doesn't truly exist, <laughs> but it does in terms of being able to describe the universe, mm-hmm. you know? Mm. Well, I think we're both on the fence for this one. Yeah. I love the idea of there being aliens, and I love the idea of visitation. And, Same. But when you think about it, logistically and realistically... Well, that's it. It's, realistically, it's, it's the logic behind it. I just doesn't, It doesn't add up. It doesn't... Yeah, like... It's it, not convention, a conventional way of doing things, is it? I like it, down if, if they're... I mean, what's the general idea? Like, it's either that they're the, the, the good or bad, isn't it? Like, in terms of the bad... Generally, these trying to fucking th- steal things yeah. from, uh, you yeah. know, resources or with DNA and with fucking souls... Or the good, they're trying to like uh, like influence, help usher in a certain direction. Yeah. But but then I always think, well, if you've got the technology to, to be here, to get here, surely you're like you've got the technology to predict how humans are going to pan out, what decisions humans are going to make. So sure, surely they can see how it's all going to pan out for us anyway. Mm-hmm. And why would you only just jump in with like little like like just small influences here and there? Uh, yeah. Surely, this like a better idea would just be to come down and be like, "Look, we we'll fucking exist for a fact, you dicks." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and guess what? He has a chart. Uh, he has some calculations. Uh, this is definitely what you're doing. All you uh, global warming deniers out there. Uh, no, you're you're actually right to deny that. Yeah. So good, good on you. <laughs> but but you know, like have like loads of calculations. And be like, uh, but but this is actually going on. And if you do this. And don't do that, then you're gonna end up with this like catastrophe. Uh-huh. Like uh, that's what I want. I want like a, like a scientific and he group has, of aliens to come down and, and he, he has tell a dead exactly a dead alien grey that's given his body to to our science. You can have it as proof that we exist. Yeah. Put it in a museum. Do what you want. There you yeah. are. Yeah, that'd be much better than like just abducting people. Like abduct abduct blah, 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 abducting random friggin' random idiots. nutters. Yeah. I'll have you yoink <laughs> and mutilating cows. Why do you want to mutilate something bovine? I mean, what, what's the point in bovine mutilating? I, why? Th- that'll fucking teach him. <laughs> <laughs> it I just know. doesn't make sense. I mean, why cows? Maybe in America, the the whole cow mutilation phenomenon, because that's generally where it is in America, mm-hmm. is kind of like our crop circle thing over here. Yeah. Whereby it's being faked, and it's kind of like, it's meant to be aliens, but it's not. I mean... But don't loads of people say that it's one of those things where it's so precise 
like the incisions and the lack of like blood everywhere like in the surrounding area mm-hmm. that it's like how how the fuck could you do that like does does say that but I mean in, come in on the, unless it, unless it's taking place elsewhere then they're just placing the exactly the, that's yeah. an idea and to say like oh there's no tracks there's no tracks yeah people I, cover I, tracks. just to get back to the other point though I had a class idea last night um, about how to get everybody on the same page like everybody across the globe because mm-hmm. you know how there's, there's so much conflict everyone has a, a belief one way or the other and which tend to not agree yeah as, as like a global society I had this class idea of what the aliens could do for us if they didn't want to like physically come down and show themselves why don't they just give like I don't know how you could induce this but get everybody to have the same dream for one night so everybody wakes up saying oh I had this fucking absolutely crazy dream where this was revealed that was revealed <gasps> fucking hell I had that exact same dream yeah. and then it's on the news everybody in the country has had this same dream revealing this revealing that yeah. and then you find out that it was the same in France and that was the same in Germany and when the Chinese start waking up it's the same over there yeah. I thought that would be a class <laughs> idea for the Not aliens like non-physical interaction yeah, and getting the message across. Yeah, just giving everybody the same experience, so it's all so everyone's like, oh yeah, we, we all had that experience. It can't be denied. Yeah, right. So it's probably worth paying attention to type of thing. People will probably say this, Shit. this, this stuff. And what? Ho- the fucking what? Ho- the, the the government, the friggin' Illuminati, doesn't get hold of that idea, <laughs> which I'm gonna patent. <laughs> and uh, and then you use can't it steal them. that idea. Yeah, don't Spills. steal my fucking global dream idea. You Illumin- Illuminati and cocksuckers. <laughs> so you don't believe in flat out you don't believe in the alien grace you think it's all a load of bullshit and it's just people losing their minds with a stupid idea of these these aliens coming and taking them and you think it's media and pop culture that's kind of driving it uh, generally yeah but I'm open as with everything I'm open to it you know the world's so fucking crazy anyway that why should this be so unlikely mm-hmm. uh, but for me there's just nowhere near enough evidence to really take it that seriously o- obviously there's people who've had these abduction experiences who would like argue but they, they're the ones who've had the experience yeah. I, I haven't had it's like when experience. somebody claims to see a ghost yeah I've seen it like they can tell you I've seen a ghost but if you haven't seen the ghost you're not really inclined to believe them because yeah. you didn't see the ghost Th- that, that's it That that that's why I had the dream idea where everybody would see that thing where we all need to have the same experience mm-hmm yeah. Shared vision. Yeah. Mm. So, my thoughts. I was gonna say, how how do, how do you feel about them? Do you believe in those little motherfuckers? I like the idea of it. You know, since uh, when I was little, I used to love the idea of there being aliens and alien greys, and especially after seeing signs. I mean, they'd be terrifying if it happened, right? but the idea of there being aliens like like that out there that have been seen and mm-hmm. abducted people, love the idea of it. But the reality of it now that I'm 26, I'm doubtful. Yeah. I'm, I'm really doubtful, yeah. I mean, the greatest in particular, like, that's a very, like, human, as we've said, like, a really, like, human idea of, like, a higher, like, a, like a more higher evolved version of life through the, like, the, the, the lack of sex organs and things mm. like this. The large heads, which is just that large brain. It's, it, it, they appear like hyper intelligent beings, don't they? Like, but they're not uh, acting intelligently. Yeah, yeah. So it just it, it goes against what their nature should be. If yeah, they're that intelligent, and why they're operating in this way. That's it. Like they've tra- they've transcended like all the animal behaviors and mm-hmm. desires of like lower life forms like mm-hmm. us by evolving out of their dicks. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> and, and all this kind of thing, and 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 it's all focused into the, these brains that they have these massive uh, maybe they just mind fuck each other <laughs> yeah oh, that's amazing <laughs> oh wow but then what kind of like fantasies do they have I'm tickling your forehead right now mm. oh you you're cutting up that cow so good right now <laughs> oh my god I love the way you influence governments <laughs> <laughs> so you think it's a load of you think it's an urban myth then uh, just this whole this whole the greys as a concept yeah, I, th- I think that's, uh, I think that's man-made. Yeah, I think like that idea, like that particular type of being, this pure ectomorph, mm-hmm. <laughs> is, uh, I, I, I think that's that that's born out of our brains. So. Not to say aliens don't exist, just that particular type. I'm not, I'm not convinced on that one. That's interesting. Well, I guess I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. 
don't want to do it. like it's it, it, it's sexy <laughs> to, to like it, yeah, to have this idea of these like these weird looking creatures. It's also to imagine involved, it's also to imagine there being flying saucers going around picking people up and abducting them and yeah and for there to be this other form of life that's occasionally if not regularly appearing around the planet and doing naughty things. But yeah. In reality, it's just like come on. Yeah, exactly. Come on. But that's a whole other topic. That's that's probably a good idea for another podcast. Well, um, UFOs. Mm. Because there is footage of stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, some really interesting footage as well. There is, yeah. So that's fucking. But it's open the, it back up again. But that's the question. Are they aliens, or are they terrestrial? Yeah. Are they like a UFO? I mean, UFO just means unide- unidentified flying object. Yeah. It doesn't mean alien craft. No, no. It just, it just means, it just means that we don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> we know it's not a plane, or we know it's not a, not a helicopter, or anything that in the public we're aware of so it could just be a new weapon system or yeah but it's the, the ones that freak me out are the ones where the they'll like they'll be travelling like really fast and then dramatically change the angle at which they're flying like in an instant which uh, I'm pretty convinced we don't have the technology to to actually like achieve that at the minute I think that's where now nah, I'll say this is going to be saved for an entirely different podcast because this is a massive uh, topic actually like UFOs fascinating stuff have you heard about the other one the one, the underwater ones yeah what, what is that is that unidentified what, all I can think is marine flying object. submersible object or something huh? it's, it's something like that I'm just doing a google search just to I can't find the, the actual name for it but essentially, they're yeah. objects that are underwater that are moving at speeds that they shouldn't be, and they're basically operating like UFOs, mm-hmm. but underwater. But they've been seen to come in and out of water. And yeah. That's another th- another theory I've heard about aliens taking water from the planet. Yeah. That's that's one of these. Uh, oh, it's, I, I think it's a USFO or something. See, but that, this idea of like taking water from the planet that just makes me think. Well, if you've got the technology to come here and actually extract water from this planet, then surely you've got the technology to just con- uh, create water yourself by harvesting hydrogen and friggin oxygen yeah and just creating it in a fucking massive lab or something I don't know how to make water I'm not I'm not a planet <laughs> you know <laughs> that must be a weird day USO unidentified submerged object like a massive fucking missile that way <laughs> mm-hmm. don't, don't we like does that exist missiles that I friggin can't you can't some subs submarines send missiles out from underwater I don't know. I mean, if we've got drones that can fly, I'm sure we'll yeah. have drones that can swim. Yeah. And do things underwater. Like yeah, that. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's like missiles being launched from under the water. It's like this. Look at this. UFO files, deep sea UFOs. In 1960, the Argentinian Navy tracked two unidentified submerged objects in the Gulf War. Sea, but isn't there loads of creatures like really deep sea that look like that? Like that in particular there was like this weird, colourful. Yeah. Like, how would you even describe it? But <laughs> Luminescent? Yeah, yeah. As if, like, a, a deep water fish or something, them sort of bright yeah. colours. So maybe th- maybe that was just an example. When when they, when they find things like this, maybe it's just an example of creatures that we haven't even discovered yet. Because the chances are there's probably still loads of stuff mm-hmm. left undiscovered in the, in the oceans. I love the idea of USOs, I think, more so than UFOs. Yeah. Because this whole idea that they're, they're going into water... And you know there might be a base down there. Have you seen um, what's that film with Ed Harris? The Abyss, where there's that UFO under the water and it comes up at the end. Right, like it's oh. right in the deep sort of is that trenches. Any, is that where early on that there's like something? Is it an alien inside like a massive ice cube? <laughs> That's the thing. That's a fucking good film. Oh, it's a totally different film. Love I've never film. seen The Abyss then. You've seen the thing though. Yeah, but I can't really remember. All I can remember is that bit. <laughs> this is the some pictures from. The abyss. You see, there's the alien. It's kind of. Oh man. It's kind of luminescent and like it seems inspired by the deep water fish. Yeah. That's another topic. What's in the, what's in the seas? Yeah. What's in the seas? We don't know. They say we know more about the moon, the surface of the moon, than we do what's what's under the sea. Yeah. I mean, I guess the moon isn't that. Uh... There's not much going on. So it's, like, <laughs> it's like when you say more people get killed by cows than they do sharks. There's more yeah. people in the air cows than there are sharks. <laughs> yeah. So it's just... Oh, imagine getting killed by a fucking cow. How the fuck do you get killed by a cow? Like, falling on you. They don't do fuck all. <laughs> Trump, I suppose. 
What, like a group of them? Like a herd? Because one of them, surely, they don't fucking even move. They're just like, meh. No. <laughs> they're going to be able to do nothing. They're just looking <laughs> at you. I love them stories, like, from back in the day when uh, people used to go and cow tipping. I never did this. I'd heard about that. I've heard, I haven't heard stories like that for a long time now. So sham, isn't it? The idea of just tipping get, cows over. Yeah, like, on, on the fucked ones <laughs> I have. I, I think they struggle to get up. Yeah. But uh, it's a bit like trout tickling. When people go around uh-huh. tickling trout. Like a night time, <laughs> tickle them in the water and then they can grab them and chuck them on the bank. It's like what poachers used to do. Tickle trout. So what, what exactly is the aim here? The they tickle? go up, the slow, during the night, <laughs> they slowly go up to a trout. I, I think they can do it during the day with the less active What, a fucking night. trout lying on the beach? I don't know, no, no, a trout in the river. Oh. Or I think you can do it with salmon as well. You just go up to the fish and slowly tickle its belly. Right? What, you can just get that close to a fish? Apparently. That's what, what they used to do, trout tickling. Tickle the belly and then just chuck them on the shore or chuck them in a net or something. That's what poachers used to do, yeah. Yeah, so it's that easy to catch a fish with your bare hands. Well, it's got to be some art to it, I think. I thought that was, like, ridiculously difficult. Trout, they're just the fucking just the lazy bitches of the, <laughs> of the river. I'm sure it's a nighttime thing, because that's when they're asleep. Because fish... Fish sleep? Fish do sleep, yeah. How? <laughs> they just kind of switch off. But the, it's not like, the, it's not like, not like they close their eyes, because, I mean, obviously haven't got eyelids. But they just sort of... The system shuts down for a little bit. Do they, so they're still during that time. No, they, they keep moving because they've got to fish. have got to keep the water going yeah, through the gills. That's what was confusing. They'll probably just move very, you know, slightly. Yeah. But no trout tickling. <laughs> if you're a poacher, it's the thing to do. I'm not condoning trout tickling. Don't start tickling trout. <laughs> you, can, you can sniff it though. <laughs> I like the sniff trout. Oh, that fishy smell, my I, God. I like the taste trout. Mm. <laughs> Calm yourself down, boy. I actually do love the taste of trout. And I'm actually on about real trout here, not vaginas. <laughs> I did, have you ever tried it? Trout. It's lush. I do like trout. It's really nice. But I prefer, I prefer sea fish. Like yeah. Like sole and pollock. Turbot, that kind of thing. Yeah? Swordfish, yeah. Swordfish? Swordfish. I've had swordfish when I've been abroad. Yeah, mm. that's nice. That's nice. So, I think we're pretty much wrapped yeah. in terms of talking about the greys. Yeah, we've we've dived away from the greys. I think we both came to the conclusion that it's uh, it's not looking that likely. <laughs> as, just, as an idea, I love it. Yeah. And as an image, oh, I, I, love think, it as an I think they're a fantastic sort of icon. Mm-hmm. But in reality, I'm really not sure. It's for me. It's it's just the logic. Well, it's it's loads of other things. So <laughs> like like that fucking maniac from the uh, the clip earlier. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, alright then. So, so you're the kind of guy that makes those calls and claims. You asshole! <laughs> yeah, you fucking dick. But the, just the, the logic of it for me, like, especially the, from the idea that they're actually here to try and help with. Yeah. My, my brain's just like, well, you're so clever with all your technology and all that, but you're just not capable of fixing the world. Mm-hmm. Like, within, you know, the space of a couple of fucking years. Like, nah. Well, you, yeah. Can't be the case then, for me. So, what do you think about the greys? Do you believe in the greys? If you do, comment below. Let me know. And if you think it's a load of shit, tell her. <laughs> yeah. So I'd love to know how many people actually think it's a load of a load of rubbish, and how many people actually do believe it. Well, I'm gonna guess that the absolute vast majority of people are probably gonna be really cynical about it. Yeah. But the people uh, that do believe in it will be well and truly like obsessed with it, yeah. and they'll believe it through and through. Yeah. Like a belief system. But then I would like to know why mm. you've came to that conclusion. Why do you believe in them? Have you had an experience? Have you had a crazy dream? Because even if you had like a, a mental dream that was powerful enough mm-hmm. for you to, to adopt that belief, then I'm open to hear on about that. <laughs> and for people to write full books on them, like the book on the harvesting of souls, Yeah. where's the evidence? Mm-hmm. And yet to write a book and... They can be really convincing though, like uh, the arguments put forward by oh, some of yeah. these guys. A lot of these people are really intelligent. The well, people that write the like, books on them, they yeah, have like an understanding of physics, and... quantum physics, and all this kind of thing. Like, uh, the universe, you know, that they've got like uh, a lot of knowledge, but well, that's, yeah, I'm saying but is there a but? No, maybe they're fucking right. <laughs> maybe, we're, maybe we're both wrong. And they, they do exist. Yeah, maybe they do. That, that's that's the amazing thing because we, we don't know. So exactly, it's. Could be one way though. Who the fuck knows? We're wrapping this up now, but it's it's an open-ended finish. It's not like we're, it's we we're, we're not the, we can't we can't say there's no such thing. Yeah, and we can't say there is. Yeah, we're, we're not an authority on fucking anything. So. We're just <laughs> we're just exchanging ideas and shooting shit. So. Yeah. 
Anyway, you sexy people. Sleep tight. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with the Jerry Springer one again. Eh? Take care of yourselves. <laughs> and your aliens. <laughs> and your aliens. Take care of your aliens. For crying out loud. Good night, guys and gals. We love you. Good night. Farewell. Exactly, like, it seems to me a little bit too convenient that they are so human-like in their shape, you know? And even the size, like, mm. you mentioned three to nine feet has been, like, the like the, the, yeah. the deviation between the, the heights there. And that's not too far away from what we are, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, and, you know, and the eyes to be placed on, on the head in, in the exactly same yeah. places where ours are, the, the same limbs, obviously just, like, elongated limbs, but, like, they, they effectively are humans without dicks. Essentially, yeah. And, and I think, yeah. mm, is, that, is that a little convenient there? <laughs> they mm. happen to be very, very similar to us. But this idea that they're essentially, have you heard this theory that they're essentially a slave species to the reptilians? Obviously, ah. you, know, you know about the reptilians yeah. as an entity um, through the theories you've heard on David Icke. I don't know if you've heard things about them outside of David Icke of it. But the reptilians? No, no. It's not just David Icke that thinks about the reptilians. He didn't make up the, the reptilians. Oh no, theory. no. Oh no, it's a, like a it's a really popular. But apparently, the they're like they work essentially for the the laborers for the reptilians. Fuck. And then obviously they, these short greys are like their biological sort of technology devised by the greys. So the robot robot aliens that we were exactly. talking about before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes me question though. It's David. It's Phil. And tonight, Two Guys, One Garage is going deep into the mysteries of space and abduction. Tonight, we're going to talk to you, all lovely people, about the greys. Ooh, yeah. Get ready. They're coming. Good evening. Hi. We once again have coffee. <sighs> Fortunately choked on mine there. <laughs> Be careful, Phil. Oh, God. Okay. So the greys. Those motherfuckers. Those motherfuckers. Those aliens with those big eyes. <laughs> We're going to figure all those bitches out. <laughs> Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you know about the greys. I know that the skinny bitches... They got big ass heads on them, big ass eyes, no dick, no vagina, <laughs> no emotion, no emotion. Yeah, maybe that stems from having no dick. Maybe it does. Ah. Maybe it does. Not controlled by the power of the balls. Yeah. Do you believe in alien grace? I'm just cutting right to the chase. Uh, no. 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 Ah, that's interesting. Believe in aliens, but not the grays. But not, not specifically the grays. No. The grays were referring to. It's kind of like the most common conception and idea of extraterrestrial life in terms of when you see accounts of people that have been abducted in the past. It's generally these so-called greys with the big the big black oval eyes, skinny bodies, and the grey skin tone, which is obviously where they get the name the greys from. There's three different types. There's a short, I mean, they're not really, I uh, say different types, then it's just sizes. Yeah. There's tall ones. There's the average ones, the common greys, and the short greys. So what Apparently. The, what, what would be the difference in height? <coughs> I believe the tall greys are six to nine foot tall. So The, the common greys are, yep, the common greys are about five foot tall, and the short ones are about three foot tall. I have, I have heard stories about the short ones. Huh. Earlier on you were talking about how there's the idea and possibility that... Oh, Mel Gibson fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, uh, that audio recording of him on the phone there's like spoke. seven of them isn't there yeah oh, it's amazing isn't it it's amazing with your fake tits <laughs> <laughs> Mel calm down sugar yeah it's crazy Jesus he's a very angry man is Mel yeah, yeah, on yeah. the wrong side of Mel he's Gibson o he's obviously a fucking alien 
It is a fucking idiot. Wait, I'm surprised, you know, because a lot of these Hollywood types are into the Scientology. Yeah. He's not one of them. Ah. He's just he's just fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, that's that's legit, that then. So you don't believe in the Greys then? No. I, well, I don't. I haven't experienced anything to like to to allow me to believe in them. Mm. You know, uh, if I'd had an experience where you know I'm face to face with one of these motherfuckers, mm. or if that was actually like really good quality footage, which there isn't of, yeah, which there isn't. But if there was, then then I'd be more inclined to think, oh yeah, that's, there's a chance. But it's all just like hearsay and it's all yeah. just speculation. And for me, that that's not enough evidence to actually formulate a belief about them. So, at the minute, as usual, I'm on the fence. He's on the fence, but, ladies and gentlemen. more inclined to being on the other side of the fence, just the, the, the other side of scepticism. Yeah. I love the idea of them. Oh, yeah, definitely. As an image, mm-hmm. I think it's it's fantastic, but it's that image that sells, and it's that image that puts that image into people's heads. Yeah. They're very, they're very humanoid, and they're very easy to sort of associate with. But do I really think that if something was visiting the planet, that's what they'd look like? Some of the greys are... Man, wait, not man-made, but that, yeah, like a, that, a biological robot, yeah. so to speak. Well, these short greys I've heard in the past, they're the ones that are apparently more so these these creations. They're just made from parts, essentially. Biological, biological parts. But no, you've probably seen movies with these grey aliens in before. Movies like Dark Skies, Night Skies, The Fourth Kind. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Did you see that? I haven't seen that. No. I haven't seen that. No. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. TV series. I think it was produced by Spielberg. Taken. The X Files. Fire in the Sky. You always oh, seen Fire in the Sky? Oh fuck no, man. That's that's a good one, like that's that's I've, it's I've quite uncomfortable. The abduction scene in that when he's yeah. getting yeah, it's it's freaky. And one of my favorite films of all time. Science. Yeah, the terrifying science. Terrifying Which, again, science. It's Mel Gibson. Important, important to point out that it's only a friggin' 12, yet it's probably one of the scariest films out there. I mean, I've got a mate that I totally like, agrees with that. He said, like, yeah, yeah, that's like the scariest film I've ever seen. He said that. I was like, yeah, just I'd, shit, I'd be inclin- scary. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree. I love that film. I just mm-hmm. love it. Always have. And like we were saying to you earlier on, been to see it three times in the cinema. Got yeah. the DVD the day it came out. And the, the fucking t-shirt, too. The fucking t-shirt. <laughs> I fucked Mel Gibson. <laughs> I fucked Mel Gibson. <laughs> Actually, no.